Hey there, and welcome to this second lesson on the basics of lights and shadows in After Effects and how to give depth to your motion design. So for this example, I want to create, I want to fly down a tunnel and we've all seen tunnel fly throughs, but I'm just going to show you how much more interesting it can be by adding a light. Um, so it's a pretty basic example here. Okay, so um, I don't want the fill. So I'm gonna turn off fill here. And I do want a stroke. I want my rectangle to be a square. So let's do maybe 500 by 500. Let's see what that does. And then let's crank the stroke way up to make maybe 250. Yeah, let's try 250. And let's make it a really bright pink will work just fine. And next I'm going to make it a 3D layer and we'll call it rectangle. I'm going to duplicate it. Bring this one underneath. Actually, we'll just leave it in front here. Position and we're going to make the position. We're going to make them 500 pixels. Uh, we'll do negative. 500 pixels. So each one of these is in front of the, the last and we'll just make this one blue and we'll duplicate it again and we'll make it negative a thousand and this one will be maybe in this kind of cyan. Duplicate again, position, we'll do negative 1500 and this one will be maybe this bright green and we'll duplicate it one more time and we'll do negative 2000 and we'll make this one maybe this orange. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new camera and we'll make it 50 like that. Hit P for position, set a keyframe, and I'm just gonna go to the beginning of my timeline here and I'm gonna hit C three times to do my zoom tool. I'm just gonna push in. So maybe we just start on black like that. And then we end, maybe we just end, I don't know, something like this. Yeah. And if we fly through it, you can see what's going on here. And I actually need to change, again, I'm on Cinema 4D. So I wanna change it to Classic 3D, okay. You can see how much quicker it moves now. So I'm flying through here. So, you know, it's an interesting tunnel. We're just kind of flying through it. Uh, you can kind of tell it's, 3D, but to make it even more dimensional, we're going to add a light, layer new light, and we're going to add, let's do a point light. As I mentioned, that's my favorite type of light to add. And if I go to two views here, you can see here's where my light is. And there are several layers past this light, like here's rectangle three, but because it's in front of that light, it's not being lit. Right? So if I just pull this light back, you can see what happens here. Is it's lighting these other layers up. And I think the orange layer was, was the um, furthest forward layer. So I think we're good there. Go back to one view. And a little bit more depth, but I still want some shadows to be um, projected and they're not. And if I open up my point light here, I can hit AA to open it up. I can see here it is casting shadows. It's turned on. It could be turned off, but I have it turned on. But these layers are not projecting any shadows. So we need to select all of these layers and we're going to hit AA again. And anytime you hit, up, hit AA, it opens up material options for a 3D layer. It opens up light options for a, a light. Uh, camera options for a camera AA really quickly on your keyboard. So we can see here that rectangle says cast shadows off. It accepts lights. Yes, that's on. Cast shadows is off. So if we hit click that to on, 
it's going to turn all of them on because we have all of these layers selected. So now all of a sudden we can see some shadows in there, right? So if we preview this, um, remember we are at half res, so we can see some, some shadows going on here. I don't love these shadows. Um, they're really, you know, pretty trippy looking actually. Um, there's some artifacting going on, like I see, especially like right in here. And I'm wondering if that is because I'm half resolution. If I go full res, boom, there we go. There, it looks much nicer. Um, I will tell you a trick here, a pro tip. If you do have very large layers and you're projecting very large shadows from those layers, sometimes you're gonna need to go into your composition settings and you're gonna need to go into advanced. Actually, it's 3D render. And because we're classic 3D, you're gonna click options and shadow map resolution defaults to comp size. Sometimes you have to bump that up to a much higher number like this. Now this will increase your render times, your preview times. So if you can, you wanna get away with comp size, but uh, sometimes you can't. So you can get to that through composition settings, 3D render here, classic 3D, or you can click up here under render or classic 3D as well and go into options here. So there we are. Um, I'm gonna hit AA on my keyboard and I'm gonna turn the shadow diffusion up. Maybe like 100 pixels, something like that. Uh, that looks a little bit nicer. It's also very dark. My shadow darkness is 151%. So let's just do, I don't know, 80. See what that looks like. That's much nicer. Um, something else that I think could use a little bit of help here is maybe the position of the light. So if I select the light here and just kind of move around, you can see how the shadows move, you know, based on the position of that light. I do like it a little bit high up like that. So let's preview this and see how it looks. Okay, so there it goes and it looks pretty dope. It's my favorite word of the of 2020, dope. Um, I like it. So you can see here that the light and shadows add a lot of depth to this very simple setup. Um, and this is a very simple you know, example of what you can do with lights and shadows. We'll move into some more complicated ones here in just a moment. But uh, yeah, it looks really nice. So um, with lights and shadows and uh, without lights and shadows, and of course, for some reason my computer is just dogging it today. Um, but before I stop this video, I do want to show you, let's just take a look really quickly um, at the difference between, so we are using a point light, which I said is one of my favorite types of lights to use. Um, and we'll change this here in just a second to a spotlight and then to a, a ambient light and a parallel light so you can get an idea. But again, here we are back at no point light, uh, no any type of light, very flat. Um, and there we go again with the very basic point light setup, one light. You could add multiple point lights to this, make it more interesting. Um, but let's just go right here. Let me save this puppy. And let's just uh, change this from layer. Oh, actually here before we do it. So you can see now all of a sudden we have point light options here. I was mentioned in video one, sometimes you see this, sometimes you don't, uh, which is nice. It's, it's here. So we can change it to spotlight. And let's see what happens here. Funny, not much of a change here. And I think that's because the light is fully encompassed. So you can see here the cone is way outside of our box. So if I was to bring in this cone, obviously this is gonna make it look you know, much different. A lot more uh, vignetting on the sides. Uh, we'll go back to a parallel. Let's see what the parallel looks like. Very um, harsh shadows. So for this parallel light, I'm actually going to open up the transform properties and drop the position. And you can see here, you can't rotate a parallel light, uh, nothing. It's just point of interest and position. So we'll just move the position down, maybe something like that. And yeah, I don't love that. Um, and then, you know, maybe bring the uh, intensity up on it. 
Yeah, just not one of my favorite types of lights. So let's actually undo all this and let's bring it back to a point. And then we'll do one more, which is ambient. And ambient's not gonna create any shadow. It's just flat, just like that. So I'll undo that. And let's just say for some reason we wanted to give it just a little bit more light in there. That's when I would create a second light. This would be my ambient light. Change it from type to ambient and we'll bring down the intensity and just fill in some of these spots. So you can see now everything's a little bit uh, brighter, a little bit more light going on, but there are still some nice shadows in there. So I'd hit AA on my keyboard. Maybe take this down even more. You know, I tend to like things a little darker in my own personal style. Um, so for me, bringing an ambient light, I bring it way down. If you have a brighter style, you'd want more ambient light. So without, with. Maybe I bring that up just a hair. So, so there you go. That is how to, that's a simple way to use uh, lights on a tunnel to give more depth. Let's move on to another lesson.